Hey people, good afternoon everyone. Thanks so much as ever for joining in today. Really happy to see so many of you guys here. Really happy to see you guys are up for learning. So as I said, thanks Taryn for the kind words. Thanks you guys. Awesome stuff. So as always, we're doing some maths today. We're keeping it nice and short and we're getting through some good material that's going to help get us really solid if we're thinking about doing A-level math. So we've got all that mathematics we need. Um, also, if you're a year eight or year nine, it also could be um, applicable to you guys as well. Just a little shout out again today's session. I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter um, just because I'm on um, babysitting duty uh, and the little one's asleep now and she will be up any minute now. So let's get going. Thanks so much for joining. Hi all you guys. Really, really proud of you guys here and let's get learning. Now today we're continuing with our laws of indices. We're doing about one, two, three, four. We're doing five questions today. The last two are sort of exam mode. I've seen them come up in the AS. That's the half maths A-level paper. So we'll just cover a bit of those as well. Remember what we need? Need your brain. Your brain is your most important asset. Bring it to the table today and anything we can cover you guys can learn. And really, really importantly, as I always say, and you're probably sick of me here saying it, write stuff down. As I show an example, please copy down, then do the your turn. These sessions are as much about writing your maths neatly, showing your workings, getting full marks, as it is about actually just getting the right answer. Okay, brain cells ready, let's get going. So in the previous last two lessons, we've talked about our various laws of indices. And in this session, we've practiced all of these now, but in this session, we're going to do a bit of a mix up. But one thing I need you guys really good at, and I can't make this point strongly enough, at A level, you guys are going to just be faced with adding fractions, subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions the whole time. You've got to be super fluent. So I'm just going to do a quick example of something you guys have just got to be really good at. So remember, if I was trying to work out something like two-fifths, add four-sevenths, when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to make the denominators the same, right? It's a bit like if I was saying, what's two euros add four pounds? I can't really combine them or make sense of them until I convert them to the, the same units. Same here. We've got two fifths add four sevenths. We have to combine them with the same units. So we look for the lowest common multiple of five and seven, which is 35. And we're going to change each fraction so that it has a denominator of 35. To do that, you multiply the 5 by 7. So you've got to multiply the 2 by 7 and get 14. F to get the 7 to be 35, you multiply by 5. So you've got to do the same to the numerator to get 20. Combining them then, which we can, 14 35ths add 20 35ths is 34 35ths. Only pointing that out, this isn't the exam stuff. We're going to use fractions all day today. And it comes up in A-level over and over and over again. And you've got to be fluent. So just make sure you're with me on that. If not, go back and practice your adding, subtracting fractions. Right, first example of the day. Here we go. Evaluate, remember that means work out the numerical answer to, the following. So we've got three, three, to the power of negative a fifth multiplied by three to the power of three multiplied by three to the power of six fifths. When we're multiplying and the base number's the same, we can add these numbers here. So this is the same as three, three to the power of negative a fifth plus three plus six fifths. And I'm actually just gonna rewrite that Negative a fifth plus six fifths. I can write that as six fifths, take away one fifth. And don't forget that plus three. All I've done here is I've just swapped those around. And therefore, this is three to the six fifths, take away one fifth is actually five fifths plus that three. And five fifths is one. So this is actually three to the power of one plus a three, which is three to the power of four. 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27, times another 3 is 81. And we have evaluated that. We've worked the numerical answer out. 
So hopefully that was a nice, simple enough one to get going with. They're going to get more tricky as we go along. Over to you guys. Evaluate the following answer in the chat box. David, Rowan, Polina, Emily, Millie, Amelia, Mariam. We're getting loads of good answers here. We're getting the answer often, 25. A couple of people wrote five squared. It did say evaluate. That means give you a numerical answer too. Let's have a look what I got. When I combined them, I got five squared, which was actually 25. So really well done, Tom, Lucy, Harshina, Faith, all of you guys and everyone else I didn't manage to say. Lovely stuff. Good stuff today. We solved that bad boy. Okay, on to a more tricky one. Here we go. Next example. This doesn't say evaluate. It says simplify leaving uh, the following, leaving your answer in index form. Don't have to work out the actual numerical, va numerical value here. So what have we got? 3 to the negative of fifth multiplied by 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the 9 fifths. Because we've got the same base here, we can write that as 3 to the power of negative a fifth plus 4 plus 9 fifths, right? I'm just going to go over here and actually do a separate working for the fraction, actually. So I'm just going to go over here and deal with that fraction separately. So negative a fifth plus 4 plus 9 fifths. Well, negative a fifth plus 9 fifths is actually 8 fifths because it's, it's like 9 fifths take away uh, 1 fifth. So that's 8 fifths. And then we've still got the plus 4. And often when I'm doing this, I might, rather than write that as 4, uh, I'd, add, I'd add these together by making 4 a fraction. So I can write 4 as 4 over 1. In order to add these fractions together, I need to have the same denominator. So I'm going to make the denominator here 5 times the top and bottom by 5 here. So it's 8 fifths add 20 fifths and therefore I'm going to get 28 fifths. Now I did that because I didn't want loads of working. I just thought I'd deal with the fractions down here in some separate working. And I've referenced it with a W to show that. So this combined therefore is 3 to the power of 28 over 5 and we're done. We just asked to simplify and leave an index form. No need to actually uh, try and evaluate that. Okay, was a bit trickier, guys. Fractions got a bit trickier. Didn't combine as easy as before. That's why I did separate working. Over to you. See if you can co cope with this bad boy. Here you go. Risha, loving the brackets. As with deadly poison, loving the brackets. Okay, I'm seeing so many good answers here. There's there's a few people, um, I think might, might have a little mistake, but a lot of people are getting the right answer. Remember, if you make a mistake, there is absolutely no shame in that. We often learn in life from making a mistake and correcting it. If you need to go back, watch this session afterwards, repractice, no shame at all. Full of pride for you for having to do that. But let's see the answer anyway. So combining this, I got the answer 5 to the power of 13 over 3. Loving some of the brackets in there that I'm seeing from people. Well done, guys. Okay, next one. Let's move on. 
simplify fully the following. We've got a to the power of two thirds, b to the power of two fifths, multiplied by a to the power of four thirds, and b to the power of negative 12 fifths. So I'm just going to write that down. So a to the power of two thirds, b to the power of two fifths, multiplied by a to the four thirds, b to the negative 12 fifths, like that. Now, we can multiply in any order. That's a really cool property of multiplication. So I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's a to the two thirds multiplied by a to the four thirds. Get all the a's together, right? Oh, use yellow would be better. And then get all the b's together. So multiply by b to the two fifths, multiply by b to the negative 12 fifths, like that. Get all those b's together as well. Then deal with the, the base is the same for these a's, so we can combine the exponents. So this is a to the power of two thirds plus four thirds, multiplied by b to the power of two fifths, add negative 12 fifths. Okay, so that was the A part there and this was the B part here. Now just tidying this up, we've got ourselves A to the power of 6 thirds, 2 thirds add 4 thirds is 6 thirds, multiplied by B to the power of, well 2 fifths add negative 12 fifths, is like 2 fifths take away 12 fifths, which is negative 10 fifths. Okay, and tidying this up, both of these fractions can be simplified, 6 thirds 6 over 3 is 2, so that's a squared, multiplied by, well, 10 over 5 is also 2, so negative 10 over 5 is negative 2. So we've got a squared multiplied by b to the negative 2, or tidying up, that's a squared multiplied by b to the negative 2. You could leave your answer like that, or you could write it as a squared over b squared. And we're done. Probably this is my favourite way of writing it, actually. Right, bit tricky there, but time for you guys to have a go yourself. Just keep your wits about you, break it up, take your time, no rush. Here's your turn. Wow, seeing some amazing answers in here. Amit, Polina, uh, loads of other people, Jacob. So people are writing it's either a to the power of 8 b to the multiplied by b to the negative 6. And I got that as well. Or some of you nicely are writing that's the same as a to the power of 8 over b to the power of 6. Both of these are absolutely fine. B's and 6's sometimes get a bit confusing, guys. That says A to the A over B to the power of 6, and we're done. Really proud of you guys. A lot of those are, a lot of you guys are getting that right. That That's really good stuff, really good stuff. Now, we're about 10 minutes in. We've got two more questions to do. Both of these are exam-style questions. I saw them in specifications for the AS level. That's the half A level. So the type of topic you'd meet in the first few weeks of doing A level, right? Might only be worth a couple of marks in the exam. Not the meat and drink of A level, but just nevertheless, it was exam standard. So let's have a go at these two questions. Like yesterday when we smashed it, we can do it again today. Here we go. Simplify fully the cube root of a to the power of 4 multiplied by the cube root of 27a squared. So the cube root of a to the power of 4 multiplied by the cube root of 27a squared. 
Now, I just take my time when I do this. I don't try and solve the world's ills in one go. So what I say is, okay, I'm going to rewrite the cube root as to the power of a third based on one of our rules that we've learned about previously. We should know that a to the power of 1 over m is the mth root of a. So in particular, a to the any number to the power of a third is the same as the cube root of that number. So in this case, we can rewrite this as a to the power of 4 all to the power of a third. Exactly the same as writing that. Multiplied by, do the same thing here, 27a squared, but this whole bad boy to the power of a third. Now, using the power of the power rule, a to the power of um, n to the power of m, you can just multiply these. So that's a to the power of 4 multiplied by a third. Multiply by, let's do this over here. Now, because we've got a number, a number 27 and a squared, we can put the 27 to the power of a third and the a squared to the power of a third. So multiply that by 27 to the third. Multiply that by a squared to the third. Just breaking that up. So, 4 multiplied by a third is, is 4 thirds. So, that's a to the power of 4 thirds. 27 to the third. Just going to do a bit of working for that just to make sure we don't forget why this is the case. The working, 27 to the power of a third means the cube root of 27. What number multiplied by itself 3 times gives 27? Well, 3 is the answer. Why? Because 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27. Okay? So therefore, we can replace that in here with 3. And then multiply by a squared to the power of a third is just a to the power of 2 times a third, which is 2 thirds. Now we've got a base here of a, another base here of a. So a to the 4 thirds multiplied by a to the 2 thirds, we can combine that as a to the 4 thirds plus 2 thirds. And don't forget that rogue multiplied by 3 in here. 4 thirds and 2 thirds is 6 thirds. So that's a to the 6 thirds multiplied by 3. And a to the 6 thirds is actually um, a squared because 6 over 3 is actually 2. So that's a squared. And because you can do multiplication in any order, it's neater to put the 3 in front of the a squared. And here we have simplified that bit of a monster there. That was looking pretty nasty. It simplifies down to 3a squared and we're done. Now it's time for you guys to have a go. Exam standard question. Take your time. Don't try and do it all at once. Show all your workings. Here we go. Over to you. Calabrisha, Vanessa, Millie, Attica, Imram, Zal, Abby, Matilda. Some really good stuff. Now, there's a couple of people saying they don't understand. Listen, guys, that's okay, right? You can rewatch this, have another go. You don't always have to get everything first time. There was many times in life where someone explained something to me and it took me ages to understand it, okay? So please don't worry too much about it if you're struggling. Go and watch the video later with a blank piece of paper and have another go at these. You can do it. For this particular one, I got 6a cubed. So a lot of you guys, well done you guys who got that. A lot of you guys got the 6a cubed. If you made a little mistake, re-watch this afterwards. Retry that question when I share the blank PDFs. I'm confident that you guys can fix it, all right? But that was an exam standard style question. Last one of the day, another one that I found in an AS paper. Here we go. 
very similar idea, simplify fully the square root of a to the power of two thirds multiplied by a to the power of two sevenths. So a to the power of two thirds multiplied by a to the two sevenths and the square root of that. So let's try and deal with this. Um, let's leave that square root there just for now. Come back to that. Underneath, we've got the same base. We've got a to the two thirds multiplied by a to the two sevenths. So I can combine that as a to the two thirds plus two sevenths. Now, I want to combine that fraction to tidy it up for myself. So I'm just going over here to do that. I don't want to um, take up loads of working with that in the actual main working. So we're trying to work out two thirds plus two sevenths. When adding fractions, you need to make sure the denominators are the same. I'm going to make the denominator 21 for each because that's the lowest common multiple of 7 and 3. So to get 3, um, what do I multiply 3 by to get 21? 7. So I've got to multiply the top here by 7. 2 times 7 is 14. What do I multiply 7 by to get 21? Well, 3. So I've got to do 2 multiplied by 3 on the top here, which is 6. Combining those together, 14 21 plus 6 21 is actually 20 over 21. So I can go back here and rewrite this. This is the square root of a to the power of 20 over 21. But I'm not quite done yet because hopefully guys remember that for a number, the square root of a number is the same as that number to the power of a half. So what I can do is remove this square root by keeping the a to the 20 over 21 here, but saying that's writing, rewriting this as to the power of a half. When I've got a number to a power and to another power, I can multiply those powers. So that's a to the power of 20 over 21 multiplied by a half. So what I'm doing is 20 over 21 times a half. They've got a common, 20 and two has got a common factor of two, which I can cancel out here. And simplifying that, I would get myself that's a to the power of 10 over 21. Simplified about as much as I can. And some of you along with me were getting that as well. Right. Last chance for you guys here today to try an exam question. Have a go at this one. See if you can do it. Kerry, Jess, Jack, Vanessa, Libby, Edward, George, Ethan, Bob. We're getting loads of answers in here. Let's have a look what I got. Okay, and the answer I got after loads of working was A to the power of 9 over 20. So many of you got that. Well done. Really, really well done today. Now, just a few points. It's important you listen to this um, so that um, so that it, it makes sense to you. If you guys are struggling with any of this, just re-watch the video at the end. Let me tell you a story. When I was at university, I went, I went to Oxford where, where I eventually actually got a first in maths. The first year or six months, I didn't understand anything that was on the board. I was really struggling to keep up. I didn't understand. I lost my confidence. And I used to go after lectures and go back to the library and redo the notes from the lecture and redo some extra problems to make sure I could keep up. Because um, not always, when you hear something at the same time as someone else, they know a little bit more than you from before. They may have covered it in class before. All sorts of things. So don't think you're rubbish or you can't do it. Don't think like that. Just think you might need to do a little bit of extra work. All right? So 
if you feel like you didn't understand some stuff today, just go back, take another go at this. I'm going to post in to the, the video and to the channel now the actual um, content so you can go through it with a clean sheet of paper and you can re-watch the video. But I know you guys can do it and I'm really proud of you. And don't be afraid if you've got to go and actually do a little bit more work. That's part of life, guys. If things are too easy in life, they're probably not worth doing. When stuff is difficult, you know what? That's part of life. Life isn't always, as we know, with what's going on in the world and how many people are, you know, struggling out there and all the amazing heroes out there that are keeping the world running for us, like in the NHS, in the schools, you know, the people collecting our rubbish, the people delivering our Amazon orders, the people in the shops, you know, life can be tough at the moment. But, you know, all you can do is try hard. And if you're struggling with this, don't beat yourself up. You can do it. Just do a little bit more practice. Uh, Ethan asked for a bit of calculus. Ethan, after a couple of weeks, I might actually teach you guys differentiation. That is a true A-level topic. If you guys stick with me over the course of these weeks, I may actually dip in and teach you something genuinely A-level that you probably haven't seen before. All right. What I do need you to do for me to do that, like this video, share this video. No one yesterday, apart from one person, shared with me their notes on Twitter at Hegarty Maths. Share those notes with me. Show me you're working hard. And as the weeks go on, if, if school's staying shut down, I may even dip into a little bit of A level. All right. Anyway, guys, over and out. It's time for me to leave. Look after my little one. Thanks so much for joining. And I really loved having you guys come today. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.